Here we're going to look at a nice viewer suggested problem that came from the 1995 edition of the Indian Mathematical Olympiad. But before we look at the statement of this problem, I want to try something new today, which I'm going to try to do every Saturday, and that's give a weekly update to some things that I was up to both mathematically and not mathematically. So on Sunday, I completed this rock climbing project that I had been trying called Trebuchet, which is at the New River Gorge. It's graded 8C. I'll put some video of it on the screen right now. And I think I may put the whole video, although it's really quite terrible, on my old rock climbing YouTube channel. Next, on Thursday, I gave a talk at the Illinois State Algebra Seminar. And so this was entitled Permutation Orbifolds of Vertex Operator Algebras. The first half of the talk is fairly accessible, and the second half of the talk was really geared to some experts that were in the audience that I know quite well from conferences and such. So I'm actually going to upload this to the YouTube channel, and you can find a link to this talk in the description as well. And then finally, I've got this reminder for you guys. Views are slightly down this last week, which is fine. I understand that things are up and down, but if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing to it. I'm really working my hardest to provide lots of nice mathematical content for all of you. Okay, so now let's look at the statement of this problem. Our goal is to find all primes p such that 2 to the p minus 1 minus 1 divided by p is a perfect square. So before we jump into the solution, I want to give some appropriate background material for number theory that we'll use in order to attack this problem. Okay, so let's get that on the board. So like I said before, we're going to start off with a couple of number theory facts that will allow us to write a nice and succinct solution to this problem. So the first of those is called Fermat's Little Theorem. This isn't really required for the problem, but it really motivates why we can talk about this as being a perfect square in the first place. Because generally perfect squares, that word, is reserved for integers. And Fermat's little theorem says if p does not divide a, then a to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. But that's equivalent to saying that a to the p minus 1 minus 1 over p is an integer. Notice that's exactly the setup that we have over here with a equals 2. And so that means the cases over here will be the cases when p is not equal to 2, but you can check that if p equals 2, this doesn't really work in the first place. So next we're going to talk about even perfect squares, and that is that all even perfect squares are congruent to 0 mod 4. In other words, when we divide them by 4, we get a remainder of 0. And that's because if we square an even number, we get a multiple of 4, which is pretty clear. But that implies that no even squares are congruent to 2 mod 4. So this is an important fact that we'll use in our solution. Then finally, if you've got two numbers, a minus 1 and a plus 1, or really any two numbers that are separated by 2, their greatest common divisor is either 1 or 2. It's 1 if each of these is odd, and it's 2 if each of these is even. And that's because if d divides a minus 1 and d divides a plus 1, then d divides their difference, but their difference is exactly 2. So in other words, d divides 2, but the only divisors of 2 are 1 or 2. So if those are the only divisors of 2, well, that means our GCD has to be 1 or 2. Okay, so now that we've got this background information, let's jump into the solution. So now we're ready for our solution. On the last board, we noticed that p equals 2 does not work. You guys can easily check that. You don't even get an integer in that case. But that implies that p is another prime number, but all other prime numbers are odd. So we can start with that assumption that p must be an odd number. So let's go ahead and write p as 2m plus 1. It's the standard form of an odd number. So plugging this value of p into the exponent right here, we won't worry about the denominator here. And enforcing the fact that this must be a perfect square tells us that we have 2 to the 2m minus 1 over p equals n squared. 
So notice I've replaced my P here with 2M plus 1. That cancels the plus 1 and the minus 1, but I've left my P down here because we don't need the form of P being 2M plus 1 in the denominator. Okay, nice. So next up, let's go ahead and multiply this P to the other side of the equation and then factor this numerator using a difference of squares. Notice that we can very easily see that this is equal to two to the M quantity squared minus one like that. So we've got a nice factorization. So here we have, this is two to the M minus one and then two to the M plus one equals P times N squared. Now next up, I want to notice that these two numbers are of the form a minus 1 and a plus 1, but they're both odd, so that tells us the GCD has to be 1. So on the last board, we argued that the GCD had to be 1 or 2, but since they're both odd numbers, the GCD cannot be equal to 2 because Two is not a divisor of an odd number. So in other words, the GCD of these two numbers equals one. But the fact that the GCD of these two numbers equals one tells us that this prime is only a factor of one of them. So let's break that into cases. So that'll break us into case number one, which is if P divides two to the M minus one, but if P divides two to the M minus one, well then that means that P does not divide two to the M plus one. But then all that's left over is a perfect square. We can't split the prime factors of that perfect square between these two objects because their GCD is one. So that leaves us with the conclusion that two to the M plus one is a perfect square. So maybe we'll call that perfect square X squared. Okay, and then we can bring ourselves to case two, which is essentially the same. And that is if P divides the other one. So let's say that P divides two to the M plus one. That means that two to the M minus one is a perfect square by an argument that's exactly the same as what happened here. So I'll write that two to the M minus one is a perfect square. In this case, we'll call it Y squared. Okay, so now that we've got these two cases laid out, let's bring those to the top and then we'll finish it off. On the last board, we got this broken down into two cases and now we're ready to finish off these cases. So let's start with this one where we have two to the M plus one equals X squared. X is some natural number. Notice that that tells us that we can write two to the M as X squared minus one but that has a nice factorization as it is a difference of squares. We can write this as x minus one times x plus one. But now we see that the left-hand side is a power of two. That tells us that x minus one and x plus one both must be powers of two. So let's use the fact that x minus one is a power of two. So we can write x minus one as two to the K. So that tells us that X plus one equals two to the K plus two. As X plus one is X minus one plus two. Now next we can insert these versions of X minus one and X plus one into the previous equation and see what we get. So now we'll have two to the M is equal to two to the K times two to the K plus two like that. Next up, we can divide both sides by two to the K. That'll give us two to the M minus K equals two to the K plus two. Next up, we wanna notice that this thing is bigger than or equal to three. That's because two to the K is gonna be bigger than or equal to one, and two is obviously equal to two. Two plus one is equal to three. Okay, next up, we see that the left-hand side is a power of two. The right hand side is also a power of two, but the only two powers of two that differ by two, so notice that's what we have going on here, a power of two here, a power of two here, they differ by two, but that means that this must be a one and this must be a two. 
Like I said, there's only two powers of two that differ by two. So let's write that down. We've got k is equal to one, m minus k is equal to two. That means m is equal to three, which tells us that p is equal to seven. So in this first case, we have forced our prime to be the prime seven. Now let's move on to the second case. So we've got two to the m minus one is a perfect square. In this case, we're calling it y squared. I want to notice that this left-hand side is odd. That means that this right-hand side must also be odd. But if y squared is odd, that means y is odd. So we'll go ahead and write y as 2 times z plus 1. Like I said, y has to be odd. Now, throwing that into the, the above equation, we have 2 to the m minus 1 is equal to 4z squared plus 4z plus 1. That's what we get if we square the y out. Now next up, we can add 1 to both sides of this equation, and we'll see that 2 to the m is equal to 4z squared plus 4z plus 1. Two. We see that the right hand side of this is most definitely congruent to 2 mod 4, but that tells us that the left hand side must also be congruent to 2 mod 4. So we can write 2 to the m is congruent to 2 mod 4. But notice if m is bigger than 1, then 2 to the m is congruent to 0 mod 4 because it is necessarily a multiple of 4. That tells us that here m must be equal to 1. But if m is equal to 1, that tells us that the prime we are interested in in this case is the prime p equals 3. So we've got two solutions for this problem. We've got p equals 3 and p equals 7. And that's a good place to stop.